this video is a brief introduction to high energy particle physics and the unification of the four fundamental interactions. Standing on the shoulders of giants is a quotation from Newton and can be found around the side of a two pounds coin. Symmetry is an important concept in physics as it leads to conservation laws upon which physics heavily relies. One of the earliest forces to be studied is that of gravity with Newton's inverse square law. However, this has been supplanted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is dealt with in another one of my video casts. Einstein's theory replaces the notion of a force with that of curved space-time. The next force to be satisfactorily understood is that of electromagnetism and is the first example of unification of the phenomena of electricity and magnetism achieved by Maxwell's field equations which do illustrate the symmetry between electrical and magnetic forces. However, what is needed is a theory which is compatible with quantum mechanics and that has been achieved with quantum electrodynamics. The picture shown illustrates um, some simple effects of electricity and magnetism. We have a positive and negative charge. When they are static, they have a field, a radial field around them as shown. When they are connected to make a circuit, then we have a flow of charge and associated with a moving charge will be a magnetic field. Also indicated is a spark, i.e. an acceleration of charge which has the additional effect of producing an electromagnetic wave. This is the iconic or Rutherford model of the atom. Unfortunately, it suffers from two flaws. One is the instability of the electron's orbit, and that is discussed in my podcast on quantum theory. But here we will concentrate on the problem with the nucleus, because we have positive charges of the protons uh, held in very close confinement so the electrostatic repulsion would be enormous and hence there must be an even stronger force holding them together uh, which is in actual fact restricted to the nucleus so we know there is at least one force um, required to hold the protons together that is of a nuclear origin in actual fact Experiments with high energy particle accelerators have revealed the fact there are two nuclear forces the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force and this is depicted on the screen now we have what is shown is a proton which has just undergone beta radioactivity and has changed into a neutron we know that protons and neutrons are not elementary particles the proton consists of subparticles called quarks. In the case of a proton, it is two up quarks with a down quark. As you can see, one of the up quarks has turned into a down quark by emitting a beta particle, which is a high speed positron or anti electron, together with its associated neutrino. Also depicted is the strong force or quantum chromodynamics. This is indicated by the spring-like objects. These are actually uh, representing gluons, which is the force 
mediator for the strong nuclear interaction. Note that the quarks are given three uh, quantum, each of the three quarks are given quantum properties there. We have a flavor, loosely speaking, they, they are the up and down names, labels attributed to them, and we also have colors, which will be of the three primary colors, colors red, green, and blue in this case. Particles which are subject to the strong force are called hadrons and they come in two distinct types. Baryons, which are the heavier type, consist of three quarks, and mesons, which are the middle weight types, consisting of a quark and an antiquark. Also, the complementary colors are shown. So, if there's three quarks, it will be red, green, and blue are the primary colors which together constitute white or colorlessness. If there's two quarks, it's two um, complementary colors such as shown yellow and cyan. So we interpret this strong nuclear force which holds in an example shown a proton and a neutron together even though there's no electrostatic repulsion in this case there must be a reason for them to remain in close proximity and this is understood in terms of um, something of a residual force of the strong nuclear force between the quarks within the baryon so it's a sort of epiphenomena it's um, an extra residual effect between uh, two of these baryons which is still strong enough even to overcome the repulsion between two protons. So there are the four fundamental interactions indicated together with the associated quanta which mediate the force. The reason we usually refer to these as being interactions is that only three of them actually manifest themselves as an actual force. That is gravity, electromagnetism and quantum chromodynamics. The weak nuclear force doesn't manifest itself as a force but just an interaction. On the left I've given a generic name charge to the various particles which are subject to this force. So besides having uh, the well-known electrical positive and negative charges, we would designate mass as being a so-called charge for gravity, although it's only of one type. And we also have color charges as mentioned, red, green, and blue. Uh, these are just uh, labels, of course, quantum labels, but very convenient and we also have associated with um, quarks for example we have up down which constitutes protons and higher generational ones we will have a look at soon charm strange top and bottom so they needn't come char these generic charges needn't come as just a two varieties, there could be one or indeed six or more. So there we have the, the full family of all possible quarks together with their related leptons. Leptons uh, is effectively means light particles. But they do increase as we go through the generations in mass. So a muon is like a heavier version of the new uh, of the electron and the tau on is an even heavier one and throughout this uh, the understanding of how they work is in terms of a gauge symmetry which is not dealt with in much detail just there for completeness
and there is another depiction of those family of particles the quarks those words lepton, meson, and baryon basically refer to the, uh, the masses of these particles so by reading downwards following the dotted lines we can read off which forces they are subject to depicted here is an example of the weak interaction specifically where we have a positron and a down quark interacting via the mediation of the W boson and this would cause them to uh, transform into the up quark and an anti neutrino respectively anti electron neutrino using the charge parity time theorem which we needn't concern ourselves in detail this can be slightly uh, rewritten as shown on the bottom and this is more relevant to what's occurring in today's universe as opposed to the high energy what occurred with the high energies of the very early universe which is depicted in the top uh, green panel so the universe started with the big bang and as it cooled this bottom reaction becomes more prominent where we have a down quark turning into an up quark by emitting w minus particle this w particle is too heavy uh, to exist for long according to heisenberg and certainty principle it has to pay back the energy debt that it borrowed off the vacuum and it will decay into an electron a neutrino which are much lighter so this is how we interpret beta radioactivity so together with electromagnetism the weak interaction is understood as one unified force the electroweak interaction and although that's an example of the more prominent reactions others were important specifically in the early universe and can be uh, reproduced in high energy particle accelerators so some of these so called Feynman diagrams are of different types are represented here just, just to show the, uh, the fact that it's not just one particular phenomena that it relates to So there is a particular computer animation of what has been detected in some of these high energy particle accelerators. So as the particles approach the speed of light, it is mainly their mass that increases as they are subjected to uh, the resultant forces of the accelerator. This increase in momentum reduces their quantum wavelength, therefore allowing greater resolution. Um, this has been explained in the quantum uh, video clip but also the increased energy allows a new plethora of particles to be created when two such collisions uh, occur between two particles all this being explained by theory of relativity and quantum theory putting it into a cosmological perspective uh, we can effectively wind back the evolution of the universe right back to the Big Bang where the energies were very very high similar to those and indeed higher than those produced in high particle accelerators such as in CERN, Geneva. It illustrates that as the universe expanded and cooled down what was originally one super unification of these interactions split off gravity thirst and then the strong interaction split off from the electro weak and in today's world we observe electromagnetism as being a separate phenomena to the weak nuclear forces so each of these branchings corresponds to a breaking of the overall symmetry of the original super unified field 
the holy grail of physics is to understand what this original field was the main problem being uniting the electromagnetic the weak and the strong interaction which are understood in terms of what is called the standard model with gravity for which we do not as yet have a quantum description more details of this and other video casts can be downloaded electronically from the link shown before below